Well, welcome to Raised in Alaska. Today we're going to smoke some salmon. Smoking salmon is something that I've done for probably nearly 20 years. I initially learned how to smoke salmon from an old salty guy who was actually a steelhead fisherman. He would smoke one or two steelhead at a time and he produced a really good product. And so I went with him for a day and kind of helped him through the process. Not really that he needed the help, but I wanted to see the process and how to do it myself. And since then, I started doing it myself and I've put some twists on it and some different things so that I think that it's a better product than, than when I first started out. And I will say, not to brag or anything, but I have a good friend who I'd given some salmon to and she'd gotten salmon from one person and another person all smoked salmon, put it in her freezer and she had family up from out of state. And so one day she thought, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do this smoked salmon platter. She's a big charcuterie person. And so she had all the different things out and she had three different varieties of salmon out. And people that were there tried them and, and stuff like that. And one of her cousins came up and she, she said, this one right here is not just the best salmon here, but it's the best smoked salmon I've ever had in my life. And she was telling me this story. And the whole time I'm interrupting her, acting like I'm being rude and going, oh, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. Oh, mine's the best. And, um, and we're laughing about it. And she gets to the end and she says, you know, I don't really know whose was whose, um, but the one that she liked the best was vacuum sealed and it had red pepper flakes on it. And it was still very moist on the inside and I went that is mine and um, and so it does produce a really good product and so I'm gonna take you through the steps that I've that I used for this this isn't really super comprehensive I wouldn't say I do have a comprehensive fish smoking video in my library of videos or whatever if you're interested but I think that this goes through all the steps pretty well so enjoy if you're looking at a way to preserve some of your salmon put it up different i think you should try this and so come along and we'll smoke some salmon today smoking salmon is really more of an art than it is just cooking and of the ones when i've been to other people's houses and shared mine salmon with people uh, including people who smoke their own salmon. The best compliment I think that you can get here in Alaska if somebody says, oh yeah, that tastes just like mine. I've never had any two people smoke salmon is the same. In my brine, I have two cups of non-iodized salt, two cups of brown sugar, and one gallon of water. So I have two gallons of that in here. I'm gonna take this plastic bag here, twist it off, close it up and I'll put a bag of ice on top of this to keep it cool. Right, I'm going to spray all these racks of Pam and this will make it so the skin doesn't stick to the racks as much. Or canola oil, I guess. And I'm going to sort these by size. Like this is a thick one, so I'll make this a thick pile here. And this is a medium one, so... So we'll make this a medium pile here. I'm gonna go rinse some more, come back. I'm hoping that this will all fit on these racks. I ended up with about two or three more racks of fish, so I'm gonna have to run this another day. What I'm gonna do now is just put a paper towel on these and pat them dry. So, so far the brine had both sugar and salt in it. What that sugar and the salt does really is it begins to de dehydrate this flesh and it also gets flavor into it, but part of that is salt most certainly inhibits bacterial growth but but you're trying you know in the smoking process most certainly dehydrates stuff down a lot and so part of right now just patting these dry is to get as much of the water off as possible so you can see now there's probably about 50 pounds on the racks roughly and then another I don't know, seven pounds or so in here. We've had the fan on this now for about four hours drying. And you can see they kind of feel rubbery. And the ambient temperature outside is probably about mm, high 30s would be my guess. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a glaze to this. And the glaze will help keep moisture in this and it also then adds a kind of another layer of flavor to this so we're going to go ahead and make the glaze out of brown sugar and yukon jack and the alcohol in the yukon jack will get evaporated away
And then we'll just paint that on to all of these. Okay, now with that done, I'm going to put some red pepper flakes on these. I just salt this on there. Most of the heat from this will go away in the cooking process. It just adds a little bit of zing to it then. A little bit of red pepper flakes on it. I'm going to put the fan on for about another hour now and dry that back off. I've had these going now for about an hour on the fan. You can see there's still a little bit of a glisten to them. But that'll get taken care of in the smoker. So I'm going to go ahead and get these in the smoker and we'll start the process. So I'm going to end up putting five runs of smoke on this. And the first three, I'm going to use kind of a mild chip, a hickory. And then the last two, I will use mesquite because it adds a little bit of bite to it. So the first six hours I had hickory on. I'm gonna change to mesquite here. So I've already taken about a third of these out of here. And it looks like most of these are probably done. Let's check these top ones here. Mm. Some of them are done. I would say this one needs a little bit more time and so does that one, but those three are done. So I'm gonna go through all these racks and take out what's done and then leave the rest down next to the, put them on, consolidate them onto one rack and put them down at the bottom. All right, that's the last of it and it is done. Okay, here we are. It's all done smoking. Now we're gonna let it cool overnight and then it'll stiffen up and then we can vacuum pack it. So we'll vacuum pack tomorrow morning. Okay, so we're finally at the last step, vacuum packing. So we're gonna put one in there and then we'll vacuum seal that up. So we put this in there and this is the sealing bar where the heat is and it'll melt this plastic together. We close the lid, push the start button. And the bag poofs up. But what's happening, meanwhile, is this is sucking all the air out of there. So right now there's like 99.5% of the air that's been sucked out of there. Well, it looks exactly the same in there. And now it's holding it to 99.8% of the air out of there at 12 seconds. It seals it. It puts air back in. When you open it up, there's no air in that. That'll last two years that way. So that is 50 pounds of salmon in one milk crate. I have two that didn't seal. You can see on the top of this where I had a couple creases and air snuck in there. So that we'll end up using for some kind of cool dinner in the near future here. So, hey, thanks for tuning in. We always appreciate your support. Well, I will say at the end of my video, at the end of this um, prepper style 
um, series of videos I'm doing, I like to have a little reflection about what I learned or, or whatnot. And I'll say, in this process, I didn't really learn anything new. I've been smoking salmon for a long time. I've experimented with things. I just did kind of the way that I always do it here. This yield, that I started with about 50 pounds of salmon, it ended up yielding, I didn't weigh it in the end, but I'd be willing to bet it only yielded about 35 pounds in the end. There's a fair amount of water that comes out during the process. And then I vacuum seal every one and I always write the date on it or the year so that I know which year it was in case I missed a, missed one in my freezer from a couple years ago. You know you're getting something old. Um, for smoked salmon for myself, I generally don't just open up a package of smoked salmon and just eat it like you would jerky or something. I personally generally make a dish out of it. I'll show you a quick dish we made last night that is one of my favorite ways. It's a smoked, uh, it's smoked salmon stuffed mushroom. So I'll give you a quick clip of that. Smoked salmon stuffed mushrooms. But I also like to make a, like a smoked salmon cheese spread out of it. I use it in fettuccine. Um, it is nice to put on a charcuterie platter where there's crackers and cheese and you're eating it kind of sort of by itself with other things. But my favorite way is actually to add it into food to make it more flavorful. That's just maybe my preference. At any rate, um, I look forward to seeing you on the river. And if you happen to see us, stop and say hi. Thanks for tuning in today.